Testing, testing, testing. JB here, JB here. August 30th, 2022. Hope, hope everybody's doing outstanding. Just want to get on really quick. Haven't been on audio in, I guess, over a week now. Talk about uh, Blue Apron, a little bit about what happened on Friday with the Fed. Still earnings this week. So we have names like Lululemon reporting Thursday after the close, MBB reports. I'll talk a bit about that for a minute or two and go from there. So first, um, Blue Apron, I mean, it's a product that my I have experience with. Well, I don't. My wife does because she, she tried it out. Then there's other uh, platforms uh, or other services similar. Um, and that kind of brought me to CVGW, Calvo, Calvo Growers. <laughs> I forget how to pronounce it. Mostly on the avocado side, but they do have a prepared business line as well. So all that together, it gives me a little bit of experience when I'm looking at Blue Apron. And the company was... Uh, far inferior in terms of their packaging, uh, their customer service, and uh, the quality of their 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 offering. And that was b- back before they IPO'd. Um, as they IPO'd, the stock did pretty well, but then you could see that the company was losing losing money. Um, short start to, to come in. Company just didn't execute well. Competition was hurting, um, and you would think even with COVID uh, accelerating. They got a bump in, in in orders from COVID. They should have been able to retain those subscribers. They were not. But now uh, they have a new CEO. Well, this, I wouldn't say new, but it's a, a couple year transformation, trying to scale on to different things, um, as opposed to just uh, a, a meal meal kit. You know, three meals a, a week or whatever. And I think they've done a pretty good job with that. You had Citron Research saying that Blue Apron should be acquired by Peloton. This is when Peloton was uh, up in the hundreds. I think that's kind of a comical pairing, but uh, needless to say, I think there's an opportunity. It trades less than half times revenue, so it's a $450 million uh, re- yearly revenue uh, company, and it's a $250 million market cap. Some of it has to do with their going concern flag in their filings. So in their filings, when they file their quarterly report, it actually has a going concern warning, which usually happens when there's a possibility the company might have to declare bankruptcy or they'll be a liquid, might have to do more offerings, things like that. So I think that's some of the reason why that the stock continues to be highly shorted. Nearly 39% of shares sold short. I think at some point this starts to get some footing. And you take a look, even if it trades two times revenues, you, you're talking 800, let's see, 800 million. So that would put it right now, you know, four times where we are now. I'm not saying it's going to go to 24 bucks overnight or even if it does, but that's kind of where I'm looking at my lens when I, I start looking to get calls on the name like this. Not only that, you have all the mem stocks, which have been coming back to life. So maybe one of these uh, moves on apron has some FOMO, people start piling in, and then we have a multi-day run. That was kind of the thought pro- process there, especially in this environment right now where we have some chop and some, some weakness. Some of these other names I think can can hold up well, and Blue Apron has actually been doing that. So that's kind of my thought process on Blue, Blue Apron. That's where I got the, the calls, and I'll continue to hold and possibly look for some other strikes. Uh, to play for that eventual move into the maybe mid-teens over the next uh, next few months. So that's Blue, Ra- Blue Apron. Ulta, disappointing. I played Ulta for premium build into earnings. The, pre- the two weeks ago, I got the calls into the following week. Able to close uh, close the calls out for a little bit of profit before the, the earnings. Sure enough, the company report posted a great report, but the stock just reversed course on Friday, and mostly in sympathy with what, what the market was doing. And then, sure enough, was it due yes, yesterday, Reverses course back up into 420s. I'm not going to chase Ulta here. I do think maybe gets back over 430 and maybe 440 in the coming days. But I do think Lulu offers an opportunity for a, a premium build similar to what I did with Ulta into their earnings. Not as many days. They report earnings after the close Thursday. So add some calls today. Get some a move today, tomorrow, Thursday, and then lock some or all of the calls in before the earnings. Because it's a high risk s- scenario, especially with the premiums. The, I think the 340s uh, look interesting, but they're expensive. And I'm not uh, um, when when I don't see a decent risk reward on a, a, a play into a binary event like earnings, I tend to, to lock them in, or at least be able to lock in half of them to, to cover costs and, and ride the rest. So that's kind of the thought process there with with Lulu. Uh, some of the other names, MDB reports to is it, no, they, yeah, the 31st they report. Uh, tomorrow and i've been and mdb has been a great risk signal for the market every time it's off six seven percent it's 
the market usually is not doing well. Sure enough, what does it do Friday? The market's getting destroyed and MDB is only off 2%. So I thought that was kind of a silver lining. Then sure enough, what does it do yesterday? Same with Palo Alto. They both were getting hammered uh, after the open. MDB still closed down 6%. Maybe some of it has to do with the premiums into the earnings because the premiums are insane on the, on the calls and puts on MDB. But I'll continue to watch that one. And Palo Alto was kind of these risk indicators for the market, especially as we, you know, have this chop. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, last thing, uh, the Fed pivot. You, after a while, you got sick and tired of these people. All they do is talk about the Fed and, and the pivot. So the thought that maybe the Fed was going to pull off the, the gas a little bit. And then in 2023, in regards to rate hikes and their accommodative, uh, well, tightening. And then to 2023, start to pull back the, the lever. So maybe even, you know, either slow down the pace of rate hikes or even start to, to cut rates. Powell pretty much put the, the kibosh on that on Friday. Very hawkish commentary, pretty much saying this could be a lot of pain. It was not a good thing, and the market just, it was just a slow melt. So I guess if there's a, another silver lining, is yesterday we found some footing around 401 on the, on the SPY. If that holds, maybe we can chop here into Friday. And I think this jobs report on Friday is one of the bigger jobs report, and I can remember in recent memory. Of course, every jobs report is a is the most uh, the most you know, the, whichever is coming out is the most important. Every, every right, every Fed Fed minutes, every Fed statement is the most important. That's how people like like to hype it. But I really do think that if the jobs report comes in weaker than expectations, I think it's two hundred fifty nine thousand jobs expected to be created. If it's if it's lower than that or even negative, for some reason I think the mark will take it somewhat as a bullish signal because of the Fed. Their two mandates usually is, is employment and inflation. So they're looking to actually see a see a little slowdown in, in job creation to kind of say, hey, our, our tightening is working. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But I think there could be some volatility Friday morning. It's going to be, you know, if the spy's at 405, it could be 415. It could go down to, three, to 390, I think. Very important uh, job support. So I think that's it, folks. I don't have much else to say. We've got four minutes to the open. I'll try and get back on later. Um... Oh, um, who else? EVH I'm watching. EVH was one a, a great story back in the day. A, a name that's finally kicking on all cylinders, even with what's going on with the with you know the slowdown in the economy or the possible recession. I, I think the, co the company has grown like 40% top-line growth. It's in the healthcare space. Similar names are getting acquired. So there's been buyout rumors on that name as well. So I was watching at the open uh, yesterday. Goes all the way up to 37 and change before giving all the gains back. And then some possibility, maybe I'll look some 40, September 40 strikes or October 45s uh, to play for moving to the 40s. And I think that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. I'll be back. Rock and roll.